The 1989 tour opens with a prologue time trial in the city of Luxembourg. It's only five miles long, and each of the 196 starters has to climb the steep Berg Hill on the inner city circuit. Start time arrives for Delgado, the defending champion. But where is he? He's throwing away time even before the tour has begun, and in panic he arrives. Climbs the start ramp, and two minutes and 40 seconds later, races away along the Avenue de la Liberté in Luxembourg. With the adrenaline pumping through his body, Delgado is racing fast, and he makes nothing of the hill's difficult 10% grade. Ahead of him, Greg LeMond is also moving well. The 1986 winner is returning to top form. Finally, he can forget his near-fatal shooting accident in 1987. Le Monde is hoping he can finish this tour in the top 20. It's the fourth best time in a shade over 10 minutes. This race against the clock is also a moment of truth for Laurent Fignon. Since winning the tour in 1983 and 84, the Frenchman's form has been erratic. He too has had surgery for tendonitis. And last year, a tapeworm forced him to quit the race before halfway. He finishes runner-up in the prologue, an eye wink faster than Le Monde. Besides Fignon and Le Monde, there are many other pretenders to Delgado's crown. One is the young Dutchman, Eric Brekink. He finished third to Fignon in the recent Tour of Italy, and he believes he can do even better in the Tour de France. In his steady, power-packed style, Brekink is riding faster than anyone in this prologue. Straight as a die, he spins down the avenue to stop the clock at 9 minutes, 54.57 seconds, the best time. Meanwhile, Delgado is racing as hard as he knows to make up time. He's still not aware of his actual loss, but after he finishes with a time of 10 minutes and 8 seconds, the judges will add on a 2 minutes, 40 seconds late start. And this puts him dead last in the standings, almost three minutes behind the first yellow jersey of the race, Eric Brekink. The opening road race next morning makes a scenic loop of the Moselle Valley before returning to the start point in Luxembourg City. The 84-mile stage doesn't produce much action, except for an early attack by two riders. The two riders are Cassio da Silva of Portugal and Soren Lilholt of Denmark both of whom have families in Luxembourg. Lilholt manages to stay with Da Silva until the final climb into the city, where the Portuguese finally leaves him. Two minutes behind the leaders, Delgado puts in a similar attack up the Pavayaberg Hill, just to remind everyone he's still full of fight. But it's Da Silva who rolls down the Avenue of Liberté to score a popular stage win over Soren Lilholt. And with his two-minute advantage, Da Silva also takes over the race lead. Later that day, there's another race against the clock, a team time trial. Fignon directs his Super U squad on their aerodynamic bikes to the best time, 53 minutes and 48 seconds for the 28 and a half miles. But Delgado is in trouble again. He can't even keep up with his Reynolds teammates. They have to wait for him and consequently record the slowest time. Four minutes, 41 seconds behind the winner. Unbelievable, but true. This is the ADR team of Le Monde, however. They're racing faster than expected. Le Monde, number 141, receives great support from his Dutch and Belgium teammates. The team comes in fifth. The PDM team contains four of the other race favorites, Dutchman Steven Rux and Gert Jan Ternisse, Mexican Raoul Alcala and the Irishman Sean Kelly. They take fourth place. For the tour's two-day presence in this beautiful city, the Luxembourgers paid the organisers $1.3 million. And now the race is heading for Belgium on a twisting course through the hilly Ardennes to the motoring circuit at Spa. Squeezing between medieval houses, the pack climbs the steepest hill of the day at Viandon, 30 miles into the stage. But with 120 miles to go, the riders stay together. At noon, the race finally leaves Luxembourg it was in these windswept parts that Patton's army defeated the Nazis in the Battle of the Bulge, 
but today's battling cyclists only seek shelter from the wind, not bullets, as they race towards Spa. First down the hill into Spa's racetrack is Alcala of the PDM team. He's broken away from a break of six that developed 16 miles earlier. And with his teammates controlling the pace of the main pack, Alcala joyously becomes the first Mexican ever to win a stage of the Tour de France. Yesterday, the Tour lost its first rider, a Colombian, and stage four, starting in Liège, may provide more casualties. Delgado, who's already lost seven minutes, is worried he'll lose even more time on the rough cobblestone roads that await him near the end of this marathon stage. Rattling over cobblestones at speeds of 30 miles an hour is an acrobatic exercise. Some riders fall and need wheels replaced by helpers from their team cars. The dust gets into the riders' lungs as well. But still the speed of the race is relentless. The battle intensifies near the end. Even yellow jersey da Silva is up there. But another rider breaks clear. It's yellow Nydam, a Dutchman who's known for his finishing speed. And he gets the stage victory to add to the one he won in nearby Lieva a year ago. Dane Jens Vegerby, he lost 12 minutes. Da Silva receives another yellow jersey. But he'll almost certainly lose the lead on stage five, an individual time trial in the west of France. Delgado prepares for this race of truth. His special time trial bike has aerodynamic disc wheels and high gears. The Spaniard starts in the calm, sunny morning. Perfect conditions for a time trial. Delgado is one of the earliest starters as the back markers start first and he's almost 10 minutes behind Da Silva on overall time. The race leaders include Fignon and Le Monde and they won't start for another four hours yet. Delgado's disc wheels slice through the still air. He puts every ounce of strength into going quickly. Thirteen miles into his effort, Delgado races past fishing boats in the ancient port of Dinan. He then crosses a narrow medieval bridge and heads into the hills. The crowds lining the short climbs realize that Delgado is riding faster than any of the earlier starters. He covers the first 14 miles in less than 30 minutes. Already, he's more than a minute better than anyone else. The finish is in Rennes, the capital of the Brittany region, and the sun is still shining as Delgado races into town just after midday. He's blasted through the second part of this time trial at almost 30 miles an hour. His time is one hour, 38 minutes, 36 seconds, the best time by four minutes. Two hours after Delgado finished, a rainstorm blows in. The PDM team, Sean Kelly, suffers in the worsening conditions and he will lose five minutes to Delgado. Everyone now focuses on French favorite Fignon. His fans expect him to take over the race leadership today. Despite the rain and the strengthening wind, Fignon has chosen to use two disc wheels, which makes a bike hard to control in the crosswind. Fignon detests the rain as it fogs up his glasses, yet he still rides with power. Even so, at the 30-mile time check, he's 90 seconds slower than Delgado. Fignon continues fighting hard. He has weathered the worst of the storm. He's picking up time. And he crosses the finish line in a time of one hour, 39 minutes and eight seconds. 32 seconds back of Delgado. Preparing for his vital test, Le Mans has a secret weapon, a set of aerodynamic handlebars, never before used in the Tour de France. He's feeling strong and determined as he prepares to leave the start ramp at Dinar. Le Mans feels relaxed on his new bars, which support his elbows and bring his body into a more streamlined profile. By halfway, Le Monde has caught and passed the rider, prologue winner, Berking, 
Le Mans is already 100 yards ahead of the Dutchman. For the first time in three years, Le Mans is operating at full power. His wheels are turning like a locomotive's. Even so, over the final 14 miles, he has to make up 64 seconds on Delgado. He gets back into the tough position for the final sprint. The American causes a sensation. He has won the stage and the yellow jersey. On the next stage to Futuroscope, Lamont has new responsibilities. His ADR team now must ride with him at the head of the pack, maintaining a strong tempo to discourage breakaways. And when the pace eases, it's the Frenchman, Joel Pellier, who makes a solo break, even though there's more than 100 miles to go. It's the ADR team who have to start the chase. And amongst the fallers, Frenchman Ronan Pensek on the right, who will lose 10 minutes. Even the yellow jersey is active in the later attacks behind Pellier, but despite a sudden storm before the finish, Pellier, who was 10 minutes behind Le Monde overnight, wins the stage by a minute, as the rain beats down on the geometric buildings of the Futuroscope theme park. Le Monde and his men have another rough day in front of them on stage seven, 160 miles to Bordeaux. It's not a pleasant prospect to set out in heavy rain knowing there's seven hours of riding in front of you. But the miserable conditions don't deter 13 riders from attacking. There's a fierce chase and another crash. Kelly has fallen with teammate Raul Alcala. The Mexican has cracked a rib, but he will catch up with the pack again. There are many attacks, but the Belgian Etienne de Wilde is the winner at Bordeaux. The hilly eighth stage takes place in the Armagnac wine area. Starting outside a famed chapel, Our Lady of the Cyclists, which is celebrating its 30th anniversary. Fignon and race leader Le Mans briefly share the podium with the chapel's priest. After receiving his blessing, the pack pedals away through the vineyards. After 40 miles, a breakaway group of four moves ahead. They work hard together and just stay clear of the pack until Po. Where Irishman Martin Early, a teammate of Kelly, phlegmatically wins the stage from French champion Eric Caritou and Michael Wilson of Australia. There's no change in the overall positions, and Le Monde will wear the yellow jersey into the next day's much awaited mountain stage. There are three mountain passes to climb the 3,400 foot Marie Blanc, 5,600 feet Obisque, and the final haul to the 4,300 feet Camp Basque. Smaller chain wheels and sprockets are fitted to the riders' bikes. They'll need lower gears to tackle the steep gradients that lie ahead. This beautiful race into the Pyrenees Mountains will be a rude test for Le Monde. Will he be able to stay with the mountain goats like Delgado? In the early stages, the Americans on the 7-Eleven team set the pace. They're hoping for a good performance today from their leader, Andy Hampston but their presence also gives moral support for Le Monde. Two riders break clear after 16 miles, Robert Forrest of France and Dutchman Adrie van der Poel. They work well together and gain three minutes before the Marie Blanc. On the climb, Forrest has problems with his bike, leaving van der Poel to continue alone. Forrest switches to a spare machine. And after three more bike changes, Forrest rejoins his Dutch companion a mile before the summit. But behind there are problems for Forrest's Fagor team leader, Stephen Roach. Irishman Roach is returning from injury after winning the Tour de France in 1987. Today he's hit his injured knee and is fighting the pain of the climb with teammate Paul Kimmage alongside. As sweat drips from his nose, Roach loses ground. He'll concede 10 minutes today and pull from the race tomorrow. Meanwhile, Forrest continues his charge in front. He drops Van der Poel. And then races towards the summit alone in front of enormous crowd. As the tour radio reports, the Packers split with a small group being led by the tall, thin Turnisa. 
the short Swiss Bayard Breuil, Fignon, Kelly in green, and Le Monde in yellow, of course. The leaders head now towards the second climb, the Col de Bisque, where Forest is caught by a lone chaser, who quickly leaves the Frenchman to his fate. And the man now in the lead, it's the Spaniard Miguel Indurain, a rising star of Spanish cycling and a devoted team lieutenant for Delgado. Indurain climbs the 10-mile long obese with great confidence, more than two minutes in front of the pack. Eager riders, headed here by Jerome Simon of Team Z, launch a counter-attack. But Ternisa, leading the second group in the distance, sets a steady tempo to keep the race together. In front, Indurain continues his solo towards the misshrouded summit of the Obisque, nearly 6,000 feet above sea level. The fans have been waiting here since dawn. The wait has been worthwhile. As he crests the long climb, Indurain grabs a newspaper from a fan and stuffs it up his racing jersey to counter the cold air on the rapid descent below. The 25-year-old Spaniard in the Basque country is one of the most skillful descenders in the world and he reaches speeds of 60 miles an hour on this spectacular drop to the valley. When Hampston leads the main pack into the town of Argelay-Gazost, after the 15 miles of descending, Indurain has taken his lead to over six minutes. Only 13 miles remain in this stage, but it's nearly all uphill to the final peak, the Cam Basque. On the long, gradual climb up the valley of the Coteray, the leader stays cool, despite knowing that the pack is chasing hard and that several individuals are closing quickly. Vignon's teammate, Gerard Rouet, sets the pace for his leader, with Le Mans tucked in behind them both. Indurain reaches Coteray, where the grade steepens for the final three miles haul to the finish. His fatigue causes him to fluff a gear change but the young Spaniard quickly recovers. Behind, Fignon is feeling strong and contemplates an attack on Le Monde. The Frenchman need only make up five seconds to take the yellow jersey. Also in the group are Hampston of 7-Eleven, Rooks and Kelly of PDM, and in sunglasses, the Canadian hopes Steve Bauer. But Fignon is beaten to the punch by Delgado. The defending champion has finally reached his beloved mountains and sprints away. The others can't follow, but Le Monde is very pleased to still be in the company of Fignon, Rooks and the other top climbers. He is passing his first mounting test with great distinction. And so is Delgado, who's showing his Spanish fans the same aggressive style he showed a year ago. And up in front, his teammate Indurain successfully completes his brave 60 miles solo to take his first ever stage win in the Tour de France. And 90 seconds later, Delgado comes charging over the crest of the Cambasque Hill, knowing that he's finally starting to eat away at his huge deficit. But after he crosses the line, only 26 seconds tick by before the surprising Kelly leads home the group with Fignon and Le Monde. The American's yellow jersey survives another day.